One of the largest theory community groups in the world is that of the combined writings of cryptozoological beliefs, or even that of the overly popular concept of alien intervention and abduction. It appears to be the collective theory and gathered evidence of the existence of ancient advanced civilizations. It's only really been in recent years that people have started to look into our ancient history, study what our ancestors said, and look at how they realistically created and achieved what they did. Various archaeological discoveries have been made in recent years that have confused scientists and researchers. Although they've gone on to explain how these things came to be, it's important to remember that these are just theories, and although they may be the leading idea into how these things came to be, it doesn't mean we should totally rule out other possibilities. Back in 1972, when a large amount of uranium ore was being mined from the Oklo mine, Located out of the country of Gabron, a small nation found in Central Africa, scientists began to test the uranium deposits to catalogue the amount of recovered uranium-235 that was gathered from the site, and could be used for ongoing efforts of nuclear fusion and nuclear reactors. Unfortunately, they quickly realised that a substantial amount of uranium-235 was missing from the ore deposits, as uranium-235 naturally forms a solid concentration of 0.72%, but found a significant amount lacking from the mined minerals. As they investigated the situation, believing that perhaps more than 200 kilograms had been stolen, they quickly realised that located near the mined location was the perfect conditions to form a believed to be naturally forming nuclear reactor that is dated to be roughly 1.8 billion years old. The scientists claimed that the uranium ore was used up when a naturally formed cavern using underground water to help stabilise the nuclear reaction was discovered underground. Theorists, however, have an alternative explanation. Given the fact that the specifications required to form a naturally made nuclear reactor require specific storage of the uranium-235, the continued influx of water and a number of steps to prevent the compounds from becoming superheated, it's believed that the location is not naturally formed and rather the use of a primitive nuclear reactor used by humans, and possibly used to create a substantial amount of energy. Theorists point to the fact that if ancient humans were allegedly able to build massive megalithic structures, along with impressive inventions which seemed impossible to achieve during such a time, why wouldn't they be able to build something like a nuclear reactor? The issue with these theories, including those that scientists have put forward, is that they're just theories. It's understandable why people would think that advanced civilizations once lived in the past. After all, their incredible megalithic structures are still standing today, thousands of years after they were built, while modern buildings and designs have fallen within a few hundred years. Scientists, historians and archaeologists can't agree in the age of some of these structures either, with some saying that they're a few thousand years old, while others have said they're tens of thousands of years old. Today, the claim that this is a nuclear reactor is debated. Other mysterious structures are those that are currently standing at Giza. It's a subject that's been talked about for years, but what some don't point out is some of the inconsistencies and math that comes with it. The first question that's been put forward is if the 3 to 80 ton blocks were dragged up the pyramids. Why are there no marks on the structures itself? Also, where are these massive ramps that helped with the workers? How are these ramps able to take the strain of a 40 to 60 ton stone block? According to modern historians and Egyptologists, they claim that a massive amount of people helped construct these giant pyramids. In fact, Greek philosopher and historian Herodotus claimed that 100,000 men built these structures, and they did this within 20 years. That would mean that one stone block would have to be precisely placed on the pyramid every three and a half minutes, 24 hours a day for 20 years straight. The pyramids are claimed to be royal tombs, yet as of today not one mummy has ever been discovered inside. One thing that is known about the Egyptians is they carved hieroglyphics into many things, yet when inside the pyramids you will not find any hieroglyphic markings. As mentioned, although various theories have been put forward to try and explain them, as of today they're just theories. The main questions that remain today is how were they built? 
why were they built and who built them? Also during the 1950s, French Egyptologist Ari Schwaller visited the Great Sphinx and remarked that there was a substantial amount of water erosion across the structure, believing that perhaps the structure had been submerged at one point in time and had not been weathered by the wind as previous theories claimed. Shortly after this claim, Schwaller was labelled as a mystic and slandered by countless other archaeologists who believed that Schwaller was making up their claims to appeal to a fringe group of theories. Despite these personal attacks, alternative Egyptologist and author John Anthony West sought out the opinion of the Associate Professor of Natural Sciences at the College of General Studies at Boston University, a geologist by the name of Robert N. Schmark. This was back in 1989. Robert then spent a significant amount of time investigating the enclosure's geology and came to the conclusion that the main type of weathering that was evidence on the Sphinx's enclosure were caused by significant amounts of water damage and not that of natural wind and sand as previously theorised. Robert Schnock also found the weathering was consistent with blocks found at the Valley Temples, leading Robert to claim the following statement. Therefore, if the granite facing is covering deeply weathered limestone, the original limestone structures must predate by a considerable degree the granite facing. Obviously, if the limestone cores, originating from the Sphinx ditch of the temples predate the granite ashlars, and the granite ashlars are attributed to Carfrey of the 4th dynasty, then the Great Sphinx was built prior to the reign of Carfrey. End quote. Given the fact that the Egyptian government is keen to maintain the history that the ancient Egyptian civilization was responsible for the megalithic structures, and not some unknown civilization that predates their culture, it would explain why efforts had been made to cover up the findings over the decades. Today, the water erosion hypothesis is still shunned by the Egyptian community. So what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.